Hi, this is Stefan from Conductor, and welcome to this lecture on using the Kafka Topics CLI. So we have a Kafka cluster, and we know that it's made out of topics, and so therefore we're going to do topic management using the CLI. We're going to create Kafka Topics, we're going to list Kafka Topics, describe Kafka Topics, increase the number of partitions in a Kafka topic, and finally, we're going to delete a Kafka topic. But if you are on Windows non-WSL2, then please do not delete the topic, otherwise things will crash fatally for you, okay? So let's get started and practice. Hi, this is Stefan from Conductor, and in this lecture, we're going to learn how to use the Kafka Topics CLI to create and delete and list topics. And these files you can find in the section two of this course called code download, and you can download the code and unzip it and you'll be good to go. So in this tutorial and for the CLI, I'm going to show you how to do it on the conductor platform, but all the instructions for all these files right here are available for the conductor platform right here. And the very same instructions are available if you wanted to decide to use Kafka on your local host. The reason why I'm going to use the conductor platform is because we created a UI and this makes learning visual. So as such, I strongly recommend to follow the same way as me. But again, you can do everything on localhost. It will be the exact same commands. On top of it, this allows you to understand how to connect to a secure cluster, which is something you most likely will have to do at some point in your Kafka journey. So why not start now? So the first thing we have to do is to create a configuration file with these configuration right here. So I will copy this properties. And what I have to do is to create a playground.config file. So that file needs to reside exactly where you're going to run your CLI command. So for me, it resides in this directory. So I'm going to just do code to open my edit my code editor. And then I'm going to create a file called playground.config. You can do this any way you want, but as you can see, this just open this playground.config file. And I'm just going to paste what I have before and save it. So make sure it is three lines only, so one, two, and three, and then you'll have your username and your password in there. So that's the first step, and then now you can go ahead and run some commands. So the first thing is that we're going to look at the Kafka topics command. So it can be .sh, and then you'll get this blob of documentation, which means everything is working. Or this could be Kafka topics without .sh based on your operating system. And again, you'll get the blob of text. So one of these two should work. If not, please use the full path and I described this in the previous video. So the first thing I'm going to do is to show you the anatomy of a command. So if I paste this in, the first part is Kafka topics.sh, which represents the command itself. Then we have command config playground.config, which is the file I just created in this directory. And this is to pass on additional connection property to Kafka, which is necessary when you connect to a secure Kafka cluster. And then you have the bootstrap server option with the actual bootstrap server you're trying to connect to, which represents the URL of where Kafka is. So if you try to do this command right here, you will have an issue. This, when you have an issue, it just shows the documentation just right now, and you will know why there is a problem. So if I scroll back up, if I scroll back up in here and I look at it, it says that the command is wrong because it must include at least one action, which is list, describe, create, alter, or delete. And these options are pretty much shown in the documentation of the CLI. So of course, you're going to learn these options with me today. But in case you see the documentation as an output of your command, that means that you're missing some options. So let's remove this. So now let's actually create our first topic. So I'm going to copy the entire command right here and do the minus minus create and then minus minus topic and then name first topic. So this will create my first topic. I press enter and it works. And just to show you just once on localhost, you can do the exact same thing. So let's create our first topic on localhost. And this time there is no command config. You can just go ahead with bootstrap server localhost 9092 because it is an unsecure connection. We can do the same, create our topic and the topic is created. But the thing is, when you lose localhost, you cannot view what's happening. So again, for you to get the best learning, I recommend you use the playground, because in the playground, you can go under the console home, make sure you choose my playground on the top right, and then you have first topic. And as you can see, I just created it, and it appears. So it's a really nice way to get visual feedback of your actions, which can help you a lot during your learning. Okay, so we know now how to create the topic. But there is a new option. So as you can see, this topic got created with three partitions, as you can see in the UI. And if I paste this command here now, actually, 
Now we can also specify the number of partitions. And it's always good to be very explicit about what you're trying to create. So in this example, I create a topic called second topic, and it has five partitions. So let's press enter. And uh, the topic is created. And of course, if I go in the console and refresh this, now I see three partitions and five partitions. So we have visual feedback again that things worked as expected. Now there's something called the replication factor. So replication factor is a way to replicate topics onto multiple servers for disaster recovery purposes and high availability. And what you have learned is that you cannot have a replication factor um, higher than the number of brokers you have. So it turns out that if you try to create a topic with a replication factor of, of two, for example, on localhost, this is going to fail. Why? Well, because on localhost, as you can see, there's an error saying that the replication two is larger than the number of available brokers one. And so therefore, you cannot create a topic with an RF, a replication factor, higher than the number of brokers. And so therefore, the only way to make it work on localhost with the setup we have is to use a replication factor of one. And that's fine. But in the cluster we have online on conductor, it turns out that if you're a bit curious and go to the brokers here, as we can see, we have 39 brokers. Now, that may be different for you, but we'll have more than one. So you have 39 brokers, and that means that we can use a replication factor that allows our topic to be fully distributed. So back into our topic now, on conductor, you can actually run this command. And what happens if you try to do replication factor of two? Well, this is going to work, but actually it's not going to be two, it's still going to be three. And the reason is on conductor platform, we've decided to just make it constant so that all the topics created have a replication factor of three, which is optimal. So even if you try to create one with a replication factor of one, we will say no, it will have to be a replication factor of three. So if you go on to the third topic, as you can see, there's a replication factor of three right now that is shown. Now, in case you have a UI, it's actually very simple to list topics. You just go and you can see them all. But how do you do this when you don't have a UI? Well, for this, we can use the Kafka topics and then minus minus list command, which is going to simply list your topics one by one in this UI. As you can see, I have my first, my second, and my third topic. Now, how do you get details into your topics? Well, you can use the describe option. And the describe option goes alongside a topic argument. So I have my minus minus topic first topic and then minus minus describe and it's going to describe my topic itself which means that every single partition is going to give me a bit more information so here what i see is that my topic is named first topic we have three partitions and a replication factor of three you get some additional information about pot potential configurations and then here we have a topic with three partitions so each line represents one partition and as you can see there's leader 31 and then replicas 31.15.5, and then ISR 31.15.5, and you may have some different numbers here. But what does it mean? Well, if you remember, I told you that when you have a topic and it is distributed, it is distributed on different broker IDs. So this means that my partition zero in here has the broker number 31 as the leader, and the replicas represent 31, number 15, and number five, which makes it a replication factor of three. And because all my replicas are in sync, it says ISR in sync replicas of also 31, 15, and 5. And my partition 1 right here has the leader of 14 and the replicas of 14, 1, and 9. Which is really cool because thanks to this, we really see the distribution of our topic onto different brokers. And in this example, 9 brokers to be exact, which is really, really nice. And if you try to run the same describe topic command, but on your uh, local host. So I don't know if I've created this topic, I forgot. Yes, there it is. So my first topic is created. As you can see, you see something a little bit less, in less interesting because we have first topic, partition zero, leader zero, replica zero, ISR zero. So don't mix up the numbers. Partition zero is the ID of the partition, whereas leader zero, replica zero, and ISR zero represents the broker ID zero that holds this topic partition. But again, you won't see any replication with one broker. So that's a good, and then finally, how do we delete a topic? Well, very simply, you go and run the Kafka topics command, and you have the topic name and the option minus minus delete, which is going to delete a topic. So in this example, I can delete my second topic. And if I refresh this, as you can see, it is gone. But also I can 
quickly go um, back into here. I can choose to delete my topic by just using the UI one more way so you don't have to remember all the commands and I can even delete my first topic. So we have seen a lot. We've seen how to use the CLI on localhost. We've seen how to use the CLI on the conductor platform. And Kafka Topic CLI is something you'll use a lot if you don't have a UI. Hopefully, any kind of UI can help you speed up your processes. All right, that's it for this lecture. I hope you liked it. And I will see you in the next lecture.